Okay, our Zoom room is, um, is filling up quite rapidly now. So um, I think we'll kick off the session. We started a little late due to technical issues in the, uh, the main panel. But now I'd like to welcome you all. Um, you found your way to the uh, breakout session on how to make farming more resilient with organic action plans. Um, my name is Kevin Smith Weissman. I'll be the co moderator. I work for uh, BOV. Uh, my job will be to monitor the questions which you can post throughout the session in the chat. So if you go down to your screen on, uh, on Zoom, you'll find a little speech bubble. That's the chat. If you press it, you'll be able to see the chat and post your questions. Um, I can see that all of you have their microphones and videos disabled. That's good. That's the way it should be. Um, should your microphone, for whatever, switch on or your video, I'd kindly ask you to turn it off again um, if Meteor won't do so. Um, just because we're too many people for us all to have microphones and videos on. I just mentioned Meteor. He's my colleague at uh, BOV. He will be doing the technical support. So if you have any issues, um, you can also post these in the chat. Um, this session will be recorded um, as, as all of the EOC uh, in order to make it available for people who couldn't join. Um, your identities will be guarded. No one can see that you're in uh, It'll just be the uh, four or five of us. Um, I think that's my introduction. Um, oh, finally, there, there'll, there'll be a poll at the end of the session. If you've been following the EOC, there's, there's already been a couple of polls. Um, you can then um, give your opinion if you didn't get the chance to do so in, in, the, in the chat questions. So now I'll pass on to Alexander Gerber. He'll be moderating us through the session. Alexander, maybe you can introduce yourself briefly. Yeah. Hello, everybody. A warm welcome also from my side. Uh, welcome to this breakout session. Um, my name is Alexander. I'm a board member of the German umbrella organization of organic uh, farming, processing, and retailing, BELW, ho also hosting um, this conference. And uh, in my main job, I am the CEO of Demeter Germany and Vice President of Demeter International. I'm very glad to moderate this breakout session. And I'm sitting here um, on a farm and so maybe there is some noise uh, around me. Um, so uh, that's uh, real life. <laughs> And uh, now I want to uh, warmly welcome our panelists for this breakout session. We, want to, we will have uh, two short introductions to the theme, to the subject of our breakout session. First, I want to welcome Ilva Schierlin from Sweden. She's a farmer, an organic farmer in Sweden. And she wants to be, be on the one hand, the producer of healthy food, but at the same time, repair life. Uh, by supporting systems um, which enable, for example, a stable climate. Uh, so she uh, introduced on her farm uh, many measures and many things um, to make the farm um, stable on this point of view. So for example, uh, measurements to uh, sequestrate carbon. Our second uh, panelist is Fiona Marty uh, de la France from, fr from France. And uh, she there works for the FNAP. FNAP is the French uh, Organic Association, uh, which uh, was also consultated by the Ministry of Agriculture uh, when the French organic program was designed. And uh, uh, Fiona, at FNAP is responsible for all what has to do with public affairs on a EU level. So that means all the topics related uh, to the EU regulation. So I think we have really two experts here, which will give us an introduction from two different perspectives, one from the farmer perspective, one more from the policy perspective. And uh, so my first question goes to Yilba. 
Um, Yilva, maybe you can tell us um, what are the lessons learned concerning government policies in Sweden um, supporting organic farming in your country? Um, could you give maybe also some best practice examples uh, by your farm? So how the measurements, how the policies from the government reached your farm? What uh, have been the implications from the Sweden policy on your farm? Yes, I have plenty of future visions, yes. The food strategy in Sweden includes a goal that 30% of farmland in Sweden should be certified organic 2030. Today it's 17%. Another goal is 60% of the public consumption should be from organic products 2030. The government supports the national uh, organic farming. It also supports some development. For example, on our farm, we get some small money for establishing, maintaining and developing demonstration areas with perennial, perennial food producing plants. For example, in agroforestry. Farmers around the world have during all times been inventors voluntarily or forced by circumstances. They have constructed tested, failed, and succeeded. That's development. I think people from all sectors in the society know what we should do when it comes to sustainable production, for example, for food or commo uh, commodities for food. Project after project has analyzed and also confirmed that our way to use and waste resources is not resilient. We should change. We should start from there. We have to produce and at the same time repair life supporting systems and support innovations on farm level. It creates a decentralized independency, we think. Here we have the opportunity to collect carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in the photosynthesis sectors and store it in plants and in soil. That carbon storage should be far greater than the emissions of greenhouse gases, nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide and methane that the cultivation systems and food systems often give today. How can agriculture become climate reparative? Here are some examples of items I will run few, uh, through. It's from our view. So hang on. Cultivate perennials because they require less tillage less nitrogen, fertilization, they have the root system in place year after year and the same time store carbon in their large root system. Recycle the nutrient from not contaminated residues and animal manure in a loss-free way to the plants. Add the fertilizer where it creates most vegetation do not compost away the plant nutrients. The solar radiation of one square meter corresponds to about 100 liters of oil every year. So collect the solar radiation from the roof of the agriculture buildings to the energy we need. Speed up the developing of carbon free energy carriers such as hydrogen for the operation of heavy vehicles which we still have a few of after the big transition to a launch perennial cultivation. Save winter's cold to summer and summer's heat to winter. Introduce vacuum insulation to separate the heat and cooling of our houses and cold stores. Develop leaf protein concentrate, develop urban cultivation. 
repair and reuse already manufactured machines and structures and pay agriculture and forestry for net carbon storage. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ilva. Um, I think you gave um, us a kind of uh, flower set uh, of uh, possible measurements that can be taken and can be supported by action plans if we want yes. to have a resilient, a more resilient uh, agriculture. Thanks a lot for that. Um, so Fiona, what about France? Uh, you just have had the elections in France and a lot of um, representatives from the Green Party or representatives with uh, green programs won in the bigger, in the major cities. Um, nevertheless, the current uh, government in France has an ambitious plan towards more ecology also in farming, but what we hear is that the, to establish these plans, there is a certain uh, leak. So uh, what about the organic action plan in France and uh, its, um, yeah, its establishment or its, uh, how does it come into practice in France? Good afternoon, Alexander, Ilva, and all the participants. Um, well, hello from Paris, and thank you for giving me the floor uh, on behalf of the French Organic Farmers Federation. Um, well, in short, my reply to your question will be that um, the lesson that we can learn from the French experience is that, uh, well, setting objectives and targets is a very good start for an organic action plan. But um, however, uh, one will never achieve the goal, the target, if one do not provide the resources to succeed. Well, uh, as a consequence, my main message today uh, to the European Commission will be, uh, please put ambitious resources in place in order to reach the target of 25% of organic farmland all over Europe. And, uh, well, above all, please make sure that the member states also do so, so that they do not replicate the mistakes that they have already done in the past. Um, and maybe I can illustrate it with the French example. Well, um, earlier today, we've heard uh, the introductory speech of uh, Mr. Wolfgang Butchert from uh, DG Agri. And I cannot agree more with what he has said uh, to achieve the goals uh, there are key actions to put in place. He mentioned first that financial support is key to achieve the 25% uh, target. And indeed, we can learn from the French, French example that uh, even if we have uh, ambitious targets, uh, the CAP support is key. And uh, not only the second pillar, but uh, well, it is not the only option to support organic farming, but also the first pillar is a really good trigger to increase the organic farmland. And um, as it has already been said by Jan Plager earlier today, direct payments belong to the past and it is well, at least in France, uh, the biggest obstacle uh, to the development of organic farming. So this money uh, should be better used for public goods, including organic farming. Uh, secondly, Mr. Butchert uh, also said that strong support is needed from the member states. And for example, in France, we have organic action plans since 1998, but we never, we've we've never uh, been able to achieve the successive goals set up by the government. So today the target is 15% uh, uh, organic farmland by 2022. And you know what, unfortunately, I can already say that uh, France will not be able to meet this target. Um, indeed, uh, according to an evaluation of the French Senate, uh, with the current conversion trend, we could achieve 15% organic farmland only by 2026. So to trigger conversion and really increase the current conversion trend, trend there is a real need for an incentive for farmers to convert. And this, is, this has to be set at member state level. And finally, Mr. Butcher said that uh, it is important to increase market demand. 
uh, well, in France, even if the market is booming, we have uh, more than uh, an increase of uh, plus 15% uh, uh, in one year. Well, we see that catering is still at 4.5%. And this, even if more than uh, for more than 10 years, we have a target of 20% organic products in public canteens. So here again, uh, you know what, unfortunately, France will not meet the goal of 20% organic products in, in public canteens by 2022. So um, the main message here is uh, that we, it's very important uh, at EU level to set, uh, to set up the targets, but it's also very important to um, well, that member states uh, really take and give the means to achieve these goals. Um, well, I don't know how much time I have left, uh, but well. well. I think uh, maybe for the moment it's enough and uh, okay. but I will have some questions and surely also the audience will have some questions, the participants of this workshop. So um, I think you will have the possibility to go further and maybe uh, just from my side, the uh, first question, uh, you said uh, two things uh, which I think we can observe in all the countries that on the one hand, there are ambition, ambitious targets um, regarding the organic action plans or the converting of organic farmland, but on the other hand, the policy to reach these targets is not ambitious enough. Uh, so how concretely this could change? What should policy do to also be ambitious? Um, maybe giving you one word more for your answer, because you mentioned the second thing which is important and maybe it plays a role. Um, this is the question of coherence. You mentioned uh, the uh, common agricultural policy um, and this uh, directly infects also what on the side of the action plans is done. So maybe you can give us an answer on that. Exactly. Uh, what we have observed in France is that uh, the common agricultural policy uh, is really the, the key and, and the current system is really the, the main obstacle uh, in order to, 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 to go up to the, to the threshold uh, that, we, that we have today. Um, and so, as I mentioned, um, the, well, the, the first measure and the first public policy, the first public measure that has to be uh, put up uh, is really to, to say it uh, a bit blunt, to get rid of the direct payment system and to reallocate uh, the, the money uh, for public goods. This will be really uh, an incentive for, uh, mm -hmm. for farmers to convert, especially in regions such as in northern part of France, where uh, the organic farmland is really far below 10 percent, um, because there, uh, there are really arable crops in these regions and um, it is well the current uh, direct payment system is more favor favorable and then there is no incentive for farmers to convert to organic farming. Okay thank you very much. Um, Ilva a question to you. Um, you gave us a lot of uh, possible measurements then that can be taken by the farms or, or they are given by the organic farms um, so, do you think that there is a concrete support needed uh, through the organic action plans for these measurements or uh, should, should this these uh, measurements be in the common agricultural policy um, for the greening part of the agricultural policy? What do you think, what would be the best, uh, having heard what Fiona just said? Um, yeah, of course, this, um, for example, the perennial plants, we, uh, it should be support for that because we have to hurry up with that. And uh, it makes it easier if it is in the system, of course, of support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm of this cap or this uh, special support for 
environmental um, work we do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so, Kevin, um, you are checking the chat and um, there are, I, I can see that there are more than 20 um, chats in. So I'm sure that there are questions also from the other participants. So maybe, Kevin, you can give me some questions. Absolutely, Alexander. So um, one of the big questions that's not only been here as a question, but is already being discussed is all about, um, is there state support for, um, for knowledge? So um, particularly, well, as, as Ilva was talking a lot about carbon sequestration, um, is, is, is there, are there any programs that pass on best practice to maybe other interested farmers? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, maybe Ilva and Fiona, can you say something to this question? I think uh, Ilva, you have, you have also participated at some research projects dealing directly with the question uh, Kevin gave us. So maybe you can start. Yeah, we, we took part in, in the project Solmak, a life uh, plus project, yes. And then we had the possibility to establish um, a small agroforestry and, um, and we will um, continue that and we will also develop that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very important to increase the, the support and also work with perennial grain, we think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, Fiona, do you have also an answer to the question? Yes. Um... I, I can also have two answers to the question. Well, uh, if we stay on the research um, topic, then uh, it's, I, can, I cannot agree more. It is very important to really also have a, uh, in the action plan uh, support for research programs uh, and par participatory research with farmers. Uh, this is very important. Uh, it has been put in place in the, cur in the, in the current um, okay, French organic action plan uh, and our uh, uh, research for organic uh, institute for organic uh, research um, has been um, supported. But uh, here again, uh, the, the means, the resources are, are not as ambitious as uh, needed in the, in the action plan. And um, if I may also, uh, we talked earlier about uh, coherence between uh, the action plan and uh, other policies. Here, um, I think in particular at uh, coherence, uh, which is needed, needed between the the general regulation and organic farming, and especially, um, I would like to stress that uh, there is currently a, a fear regarding the GMO legislation. Uh, really, as you know, there are great pushes from GMO lobby to modify the GMO directive. And uh, here also, the, my message would be that coherence is very important in this uh, dossier. And if we want to develop organic farming, there is a need for a, for a safe and GMO-free environment. Uh, thanks a lot, Fiona. Um, Kevin, uh, are there more questions? Otherwise, I want to deepen a little bit what uh, Fiona said, but... Uh, there's some more questions, but I think you can, you can um, lock onto what Fiona said. I'll be back with questions. And yeah, okay. Uh, so Fiona, uh, I think this is a very important point regarding, regarding organic action plans, the coherence of other policies. We already mentioned uh, the common agricultural policy, but um, can you give us maybe some examples of other policies that are uh, directly connected or uh, giving the wrong incentives or being contradictory to the targets um, of organic action plans and that then in consequence should be changed? Well, uh, above all the GMO directive, which, have, uh, which I have just mentioned, um, I can, 
well, also, I can also mention uh, what has already been said by your colleague from Tunan Institute, uh, uh, who talked about uh, the, the pesticides and especially on uh, alternative to, uh, to pesticides, which are uh, on alternative for uh, natural pesticides, which under the current uh, regulation are uh, out of law and the, the usage of these um, of natural methods might be out of law. So this also has to be tackled uh, in, uh, in a coherent uh, manner. Um, maybe we could also go further in organic regarding animal welfare. Um, well, there are actually many, uh, many other public policies to go through. Mm -hmm. Thank you a lot. Um, Kevin, more questions? Yes, so um, another topic that's being discussed in the chat is all about um, rewarding the, the delivery of um, environmental services, so um, carbon sequestration and um, also um, the idea that, yes, there's certain um, environmental services that are delivered by, by general organic practice, but then there are also um, practices that go beyond what is um, in the organic regulation and both need to be well um, both need to be rewarded um, so maybe your your ideas and examples of action plans in your countries on, on these issues yeah I think there's a very interesting question um, uh, especially when we are discussing at the moment the common agricultural policy because um, the question where organic will be founded in future in the first or in the second pillar is uh, related to this question. And on the one hand, we have to ensure that the organic at itself delivering the goods you mentioned um, should be uh, well supported. But on the other hand, uh, there are some uh, measurements um, that can be taken on top and so uh, they can also be part um, of the financiation um, in the common agricultural policy. So, Yilva, uh, what do you think about this? Do you think that this additional uh, incentives that should be given by policy to reach this resilient farming goals um, should be put into the additional into the cap or um, should they be put also on uh, or otherwise on the organic action plans? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can't wait until it's placed in the system, the, this um, things we have to do. I think we have to, uh, to try them on farms. We, for example, have to be better to take, of, uh, to take care of the uh, nitrogen we already have in the system. And uh, I think we can't wait for, for example, this common agriculture policy to, to introduce that. I think it must be introduced uh, on farm level. On farm level, uh, so... And then, and then make it, of course, more easy for us to uh, to continue. Yeah. Well, so uh, maybe it's on the initiative level of each farmer, um, because maybe also making the farming systems more resilient is um, also economically an advantage for the farmers. But on the other hand, I understood that uh, we also need the programs on national level. And yes. so to hurry up and to be quick um, uh, to, to go forward with uh, what is needed. Um, yeah. So we maybe- already, We already know a lot of things that we can do. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a very good remark uh, because it brings me to my next question. Um, we have not talked yet yet about um, uh, training and research. Uh, what is the role of training and research within these organic action plans? 
um, because um, incentives by money are the one thing, but uh, training and research is uh, the other aspect. So Fiona, um, can you give us some ideas about training and research uh, in the action plan? Yes, uh, well, regarding uh, research, um, as I mentioned, uh, well, the, there, are, the, there is a need to have uh, resources uh, in order to uh, fund projects uh, to, to, to help farmers to better uh, their practices. Um, this regarding, uh, as I mentioned, animal welfare, uh, also, uh, as also I already mentioned it, uh, natural products, alternative to, uh, to 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 pesticides which could be which, which can be used in organic um, and so on there are there are many uh, leverage um, on research um, on research research side and um, also for for training uh, training for farmers of course uh, but uh, when talking about trainings um, training I I also think about uh, training uh, the the well, this, the public, um, the, the civil servant uh, working in, uh, in the canteens, uh, for example, this is also very important uh, for them to have training in order to uh, introduce the organic, organic farming and to, uh, to achieve the goal of, uh, for example, 20% organic products uh, in public canteens in France. Uh, what we have uh, noticed in France is that uh, uh, the main obstacles is that, uh, for example, the, the kitchens in public canteens are not um, are not tailored for um, organic products, and uh, uh, they are not tailored to cook uh, in the in the place. Uh, they are not tailored or properly tailored for for um, for working with organic products. So this is very important to to have training uh, for the people working in these canteens. Uh, in order to to introduce uh, more organic products in the public canteens. Uh, thank you very much for these examples. I think uh, it's very important uh, to remind that uh, if we talk about organic farming and organic food systems, it's not only the farming level, that, but we also need the level of uh, processing and um, of retailing and also consuming and also the public canteens are uh, very, very important uh, because there I think uh, that the governments have also the possibility to really push and bring forward the organic consumption. But um, Coming back on the farm level, Ilva, I want to ask you, you, uh, you are um, doing experiments and having then experiences with a lot of measurements how organic sequestration can function on the farm. Um, you are engaged in the Solmark project and so on. So I'm sure that you have a lot of experiences. Are you sharing these experiences with your colleagues? How are you delivering um, your knowledge with others? Yeah, we, um, we are situated close to the University of Agriculture in Sweden. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So of course there are mostly students that we share this with. They are very interested and um, uh, they come for, for visiting, yeah. Uh, we live in a place with some few farmers left in this area. And we have been here for 30 years and done this, um, what you say, some uh, experiments and so, also with animals and other crops and so. And now we have this visible agroforestry alley cropping. Uh, but it takes enormously long time to, uh, to introduce why we plant trees on the field, in the fields, for example. Uh, mostly we want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. 
So it, yeah, it takes a, a good pedagogic um, way yeah. to, to discuss this, yeah. But uh, now it has raised this carbon sequestration question. And then we can go further uh, and also implement why we do this. Mm. So it, yeah. it's really interesting time. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course it is. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for that. I think you also addressed another mm. very important issue that if you want to have successful research, um, the research from the very beginning has to be developed together with the farmers and then the adoption on the farm level will be uh, very much easier if the farmers are really involved in, in the research process. So Kevin, uh, we are slowly coming to the end of our session. Uh, maybe there is a possibility for a, a last question from the participants. Yeah, so there's lots of activity here. Um... Still lots about true cost accounting and, and financial incentives, but um, maybe I'll pick um, a, a question and a statement. So uh, the statement goes that um, even if member states are very diverse, they should be obliged to have national action plans and to implement these. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then obviously taking into account their national situations and then um, on action plans I'll just read the question because it's very long <laughs> action plans should include measures to better structure supply chains and help farmers for example to organize themselves at the regional level to answer calls from pro uh, public procurement for canteens can the cap fund such supply chain measures yeah ah, very important question how farmers should be organized to be able to deliver a certain amount of uh, products um, and on the other hand I think also to be able to uh, make good deals let me say it like this um, with the more maybe more powerful um, processors or retailers uh, buying the products um, I think uh, uh, this is a very important question. So maybe a just a short answer from both of you, um, how farmers uh, should organize themselves and if this could be founded by the organic action plans or the common agricultural policy. Maybe two short statements, please. Uh, Fiona, do you want to start? Thank you. Um, yes, it, uh, it can be funded by the Organic Action Plan and it should be funded by the Organic Action Plan, actually. Um, well, in France, it's been years and years that uh, FNAB is uh, working in order to organize in each, uh, well, at local level, um, platform collecting and delivering to canteens um, to ease the the, the system for farmers and uh, in order to, to help the canteens to find supply uh, in organic products. So um, this has been partly funded by uh, public by um, public money from uh, from the state, I guess, uh, but uh, also from uh, partially from uh, from cap money. Uh, but uh, of course, this is a, a very very important point to mention uh, in the future EU organic action plan. Thank you a lot, Ilva. Yeah, uh, we are not so much into this direct consumers. Uh, we have been sold directly and so, but not so much now. We are more into the primary production. And uh, if the only product that is a surplus of in, in farming, is not a surplus of is uh, carbon sequestration. So it should be paid for this uh, carbon sequestration. And I think that these questions uh, about consumption and food and so, they will come uh, together or a bit later. But we have focused on the primary production. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. 
Uh, I think that's good. Uh, um, if you have the possibility to sell your products, uh, then that works. Otherwise, uh, you have to organize uh, organize it on another another level. Um, yes. Kevin, we have now two minutes uh, last uh, before our poll. So my last question to you both uh, will be: Please give me a slogan, a slogan for your national or the EU organic action plan. What would be your slogan? Um, characterizing um, the action plan, Fiona? Um, well, uh, let's, let's make it happen. Let's make yeah. it happen. We have the goal. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Great. Thanks a lot. Ilva, your slogan to... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not more, but better. Not more, but better. Okay, so. <laughs> and organic farming is a very good base to start yeah. on, to, to, start on. to make future farming, yes. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot. So I think uh, the two slogans um, are a very good conclusion and summarize of the workshop. Thanks a lot um, to you both. And uh, to all of you who participated, uh, Kevin, I think that the chat will be shared um, on the documentation uh, website of the uh, Congress. And so now we will have a poll. Um, and uh, Kevin, please introduce us to the poll. See you then in the plenum once again. Yes, yeah, so um, at least I can see the, uh, the poll questions on my screen. I hope you can also see the questions. Yeah. Um, I'll just read the question and then um, you can click the answer you feel, are, the, the answers you feel are most relevant. So how can legislators, national governments, the EU Commission, best support the process of making farming more resilient? Um, and then in brackets, it says Mehrfach Auswahl, which is German for multiple choice. Um, all right, so people are start already starting to, um, to click their answers. Um, I'll just read them to fill the silence. Practice-oriented, regional, adapted, organic research and innovation are one of the keys to um, supporting uh, the, the process of making farming more resilient. Uh, training and knowledge transfer. Oh, coming in a close second. Then um, commitment to qualitative priorities and corresponding policy initiatives. Uh, for, for, for example, enhancing biodiversity, saving CO2, minimizing pesticide contamination, um, programs for organic farms, and then consistent interlocking and coherence with related strategies or legislative initiatives. So, I can see that 25 yeah. of you have voted, um, the others can still do so. And, okay, Sandra, I think it's time to wrap up. Yeah, thanks a lot to all of you. Uh, it has been a very interesting uh, workshop and I think we have been able to work out some uh, major points and um, I think that we can address them now in the plenum to the two representatives of the IFAM EU group and the commission. Thanks a lot to all of you.